do this. And the thing that was concerning me was how I was going to orientate the holder with relation to the dividing head of the lathe. Because normally you just stick it in the lathe any old how and cut the teeth. And because you're cutting a blank, it doesn't matter because, you know, once you start cutting, you carry on cutting. Uh, but we're starting with a wheel with teeth already on it, and we're just cutting a small section of it as a repair section. So this has to be clocked accurately to the dividing head. Now, the way I came up with thinking about doing this was to turn down this diameter rather than it just being a any old oversize turning it down to the accurate outside diameter of the wheel that way I can make a test cut actually on the holder and get the uh, arrive at the the correct tooth shape and you know set the machine up and make sure that I'm happy with the cut that it's making um, then I can fit the wheel and actually align a an existing tooth to that cut that I've just made and when the machine is uh, when when the 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 holder is back on, is on the machine the cutter itself can be used to register into that cut and that should I mean it's not going to be absolutely 100% accurate but it is going to be accurate enough for this um, so that's the way that I'm going to do it. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is to turn down the OD of this to an accurate OD of the wheel. I haven't actually made the cut yet, but I thought I'll just measure where we're at to start with. And as the holder is, 18 point, yeah, 18.51. And our OD that we're shooting for is 18.45. So uh, you've got to have a little bit of luck sometimes. I didn't actually, uh, uh, I just turned this diameter down to something, something near. So I was lucky that I didn't overshoot it. Anyway, I got away with that one. And I will now put it back in the, in the lathe and take that last... 0.06 off to bring it down to 18.45 OD. That's better, so that's now at dimension. And I've also coloured it with a bit of blue dicum, which will enable me to see the tip of the tooth as I make the cut. So now you can see the damaged teeth here. I'm just having a look to decide which teeth we want to remove. This one is definitely damaged, as is that one, very obviously. That one's bent. And this one's bent and also got the um, some damage across the tip of it there. So those four, one, two, three, four teeth are the ones that we're going to be cutting out. So what we'll do is just use a piercing saw and cut a section out of here and then file it up nicely. 
will be the first stage. Okay, so off camera, I've just filed up this little um, piece here, which I'm not sure if you can make out very clearly, but that's actually dovetailed, and the damaged section of teeth is cut out and filed up to show to give dovetailed um, edges as well. And then this piece will drop. into here and we can then hammer that home riveting it and hopefully making a solid patch which we can then machine in order to fit the new teeth so next I'll tap that up Okay, so off camera I've just uh, fitted the uh, new piece to the wheel. Um, I did actually have to run a small amount of soft solder in because we're spanning four teeth here and it's um, a little bit too big a proportion of the wheel to make a safe dovetail joint on its own. I was hoping with the size of the wheel that it was going to uh, be sufficient but I did opt for safety in this case should be able to just make out it's an almost invisible joint you'll always see a small amount of solder in the joint but it gives it that little bit of security so we don't want this piece to fall out ever the whole point of this exercise was because I didn't trust the teeth anymore after they'd been bent over they would have straightened up potentially but would almost certainly have broken in the process. If they hadn't broken, I wouldn't have trusted the strength anymore. So there we go, we've got the piece in. The wheel is now ready to be machined. So we're going to fit this to the holder that we made the other day and turn it down to outside diameter. I'm just going to file the, um, the repair piece down a little bit before we take it to the lathe because otherwise the interrupted cut will be uh, quite extreme. So now that it's in the security of the holder, I can just begin to file it down. Get it a little bit closer to, uh, to the outside diameter that we're shooting for. Back to the Shorblin 102, where we'll bring this OD down to final size. Okay, so repaired section here is 
been brought down to the outside diameter and the wheel is held securely we're going to be cutting with the forces going in this direction so the the repaired section is actually going to be supported by the holder so all things being equal next stage will be to set up the other 102 and cut the teeth okay so now I'm going to set up the Shorblin 102 this is a longer arbor that I've been using for another job put in as short an arbor as we can get away with that way it gives the best rigidity possible Okay, so having put the right holder in this time, I can now put the cutter onto the holder and we can begin centering it. So now I'm centering the cutter. Unfortunately, I don't have a microscope. It is something that I would like to get in the near future. But at the moment, I have to do it the uh, low tech way of presenting the cutter to a center point. So I'm literally just eyeing up the cutter at this center. And although it seems like a bit of a low-tech method, it is possible to get very accurate results just from careful sighting. And I usually just nip up the uh, gib when I'm happy with the uh, centering of the cross side, just so that it can't move. Okay, so excuse the very shaky camera work, but you can see here that the cutter is very well centered to the to the center that's in the headstock. So now it comes the setup of the dividing head on the lathe, and you can see here we've got a chart and we want divisions 64 and the circle is the uh, disc the uh, plate that we're going to fit uh, so for 64 we want 32 holes on the plate and 30 holes so uh, that means that we're going to put a, a plate that's got 32 divisions on it and we're going to use 30 of those divisions to cut each tooth and that will give us 64 divisions on the workpiece I'm actually in luck because as you can see 32 we've actually already got the right plate on so that's a little bit of setup time saved so all we need to do is set this so that it's indexing in the 32 hole division part of the disc so I've literally just undone the nut moved it on the slide made sure it's indexing in the 32 hole ring and tightened it up again now we need to set the sector plate so that we're only going to do 30 holes and not 32 on each division so it's pretty easy to uh, 
just move it back to holes and in theory all things being equal something along these lines so on the 32 division ring so this would be 30 31 32 so for each revolution we'd start there and we'll go around like that and into there that means we've turned 30 move the uh, sector on and then we'll do another 30 and so on right so now we're getting set up we can put the workpiece in Visual check for concentricity. Looks bob on. I could clock it, but I've got um, experience with these machines. They do swap between the, the collets, swap between the spindles very well, and it's all quite a repeatable setup. So now I can bring the uh, course adjustment of the cutter down. Actually, raise it up a little bit first, I think. I have the uh, Gibbs set very tight, deliberately, so that it doesn't allow the cutter to sink in the middle of a cut. So we'll get it close, nip it up, okay, and one last thing to remember to do before we get too carried away is to engage the worm. Okay, thanks for watching. And next week we're just going to finish off the project by cutting the teeth on the wheel and mounting it back onto the arbor. If you've enjoyed the video so far, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, it really does help and if you haven't already please click subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification to make sure that you never miss a video. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at tommy.jobson and also I've been doing a few updates to my website recently so be sure to check those out over at www.horologiumprecision.co.uk Thanks and I'll see you on the next video.